<laughs> All right, we'll get the we're going to get the show started in just 1 minute here. So, keep on uh watching. I think it's time to sh start the show. The mic's on. I'm not super high like I was last week. Um, I just have the one mic on. I, I seem to be uh, broadcasting. Have I, I got all my ducks in a row here. Got my equipment. Of course, you're watching Cannabis Hotline. I'm the Grow Boss, and I'm here to help you grow the best cannabis you can possibly grow. So if you have any questions, of course, the number is 84 Grow Boss. So... Um, I actually have a theme for today and tomorrow's show because I suspect I'm going to need all of that time. So we're going to do a part A and a part B. And the theme is going to be photosynthesis because there's a lot of talk about what's important and what is important and putting light under the leaf. And so I found an excellent slideshow. Um called plant nutrition and probably the biggest thing I even learned from it is I'm gonna have to change from using the word nutrients to minerals not in the store in the store I'm just gonna keep selling this shit as nutrients but here on the show when it's you and I on this Memorial Day weekend all 50 of us here on Memorial Day weekend I'm going to tell you that they're actually not even nutrients I don't even think that's what they are after watching this and reading the slideshow. So I've got some comments to make about that. I also have these pictures that I'm going to show you. Let's see. I've got these pictures from a caller. And if you can tell me, if you can call in and tell me what the problem is with this plant, and you can describe it to me fairly accurately like I would describe it to you then I've got a grow boss grow kit for you I'll send you out it's got some clonex gel and clonex solution in it it's got a green pad in there for you I've got a couple other products to put in there I'll throw in a grow book I've even got one of these shirts I'll throw in an, an extra large or a 2xl club 15 t-shirt so if you think you know what this picture is what's wrong with this plant and there's actually a couple pictures and you have to call in you can't just type it in you got to call in 
So there's a couple of pictures here. And this came in from a consult. So somebody called me, they wanted, I think it was like a half hour consult. And so they wanted to talk to me about these plants. And my observation was <clears throat> two words in the email. And then we scheduled a time. But this is a very simple solution. But yet it's fairly technical. And I'll go over all of that on today's show. We're doing, this is Cannabis Hotline. So if you think you know what's going on, Call in, yeah. the number's 84 Grow Boss. Hi, you're on at the Grow Boss. Hi, that's definitely overwatering. Okay, but you gotta give me more than overwatering. Uh, okay, so it's overwatering, which is also coming with micronutrient deficiencies, probably. Um, it looks like you got puffy clawing, you got downward clawing, you've got those speed bumps that you described in the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. Um, looks like overwatering to me. Okay, th that's technically the problem is overwatering, and I will hand you that. But the description about the plants, there's so much more going on in this picture. So you have to be my shirt. Oh, you took the picture down. I can't see it now. <laughs> oh, okay. So here's, so it's coming back up, but that's pretty close. But there's so much more happening in this picture that you got to describe to me to get that grower's kit. All right. So let me do this. All right. Well, I don't need the kit. Pick the next color, right? Okay. All right. Let me do that. Thanks so much. All right, so oh, I got another one. So if you think you know what's wrong with this, 385, what do you think is wrong with this? Yeah, I think that those plants are overwatered. Okay, but you got to give me more. Yes, they're overwatered, but remember, this was a 30 minute consult. So you have to talk for 29 more minutes and 48 seconds. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so give me the backstory. Tell me the yeah, backstory just... on the plant. Uh, judging just by that quick little picture, I'd say that those plants have been overwatered constantly and overfed. Okay, so I don't know about the overfed. So I'm gonna. Oh, good morning, little one. So I don't know about the overfed. I'm gonna take another call and see who can fill me in on the backstory of this plant because it's not just overwatered, and yet it clearly is overwatered. So the first two callers have got the first part of the 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 picture the image right in that it's over water so we'll keep coming back to this as callers come in but i got a grower's kit for you but what i want you to give me is what i would have to tell a customer that came in the store so i could sell them some shit <laughs> because you can say it's over water but you got to tell me more about the plant you got to give me the solution you got to give me all the parts and pieces hi you're on at the grow boss tell me about this plant Man, I think it's just been over. Uh, just 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 a quick little picture, I'd say that. You, you got to turn off okay. your computer. Okay. Hello? All right, I'm going to try someone else. 661, what's wrong with this plant? Yeah, it seems to me that uh, the light is too close to the plant. Okay. I, I, I will say that we discussed that as part of this. But when you when we actually look at the problem, the problem is overwatering. So what I'm looking for is like the backstory on overwatering. Now, I will say that when you overwater, it because the because of the signs and symptoms that we're going to go over as the show goes on. When you overwater, then technically, and I appreciate the call, thank you. Then technically, yes, you could. Uh, the light could be too close, but it's tough to judge what the other problems are until you put the, this whole thing in perspective and you do you fix the, whatever where it is that we're going, where I'm heading with this, wherever that is, then you have to fix those things and then maybe next time the, the light would be in the right spot. So um, that's, we're looking for a more detailed backstory. I mean, this is like the blue carbuncle from Sherlock Holmes. You get a hat. And from that hat, you have to deduce who wore it and where it came from and how long they've had it. I mean, there are 30 more clues in this picture right here with this plant. And that's what I have to do when you call my helpline. When you call my helpline, I gotta give you like 29 minutes worth of information while you sort of listen and I have to put it in perspective for you so over the rest of today and tomorrow until I get someone that hits it and then I'll give you the answer I'll give you some clues as we go along too but
that's something I want you to think about is what this what's wrong with that plant and I'll come back to that and I'll ask you more about it too um, I did want to give a shout out to Semit so Semit put up a video for me uh, let's see on YouTube <laughs> Semit put up this video for me so last week I had a little just to catch you back up Last week I had a little episode on the air where I was way overdosed. I was so high. I was so high. I had an anxiety attack for the first 80 minutes of two hours. And so he put together the highlights of me uh, feeling my teeth, literally, because I was so high. Whoop, whoop, that's me. So there's this video. I wanted to give a shout out to Semit for that. You're, you got a guess for the grow boss? Hello? Yes, you got a guess for me? Yeah, um, yeah. I would say that they would, uh, I would say put it in a bigger pot just because of the over water, just to give it some more, you know, soil. Give it a little bit of nutrients and cut out so much water. Okay, so tell Try and get those roots to actually grow. Okay, so tell me a little bit more how you're doing the, the bigger bucket. Give me a little bit more about that. Um, just a little bit more for the soil wise, because there's so much wa uh, water and moisture inside the soil. If you add a little bit more, uh, the soil will end up absorbing a little bit more of the moisture that's in the already overwatered. Okay. Well, I got to say you're on the right track. Thanks bro for the call. And as the show goes on, if you think you got a better answer, call back, let me know. Okay. But I'm going to hit up next caller is uh three, eight, five. Let's see. I mean, I hear you guys building on it. Oh, I think I just missed 385. I hear you guys building on it. I hear you building on, on what I would have to tell you. So far, we've got overwatered. Boom, you guys nailed that problem. Like you go to some store, hydro stores, you go to some information on websites and forums and stuff, and they'll tell you this shit's pH lockout or it's nutrient lockout. There's no signs of nutrient deficiency. So as the show goes on, you guys can call in. You can call back in. As you get... As you think more and more, as you think more and more about it, and as you listen to other callers and you as listen to me drop a little more info on it, it'll become more and more clear. Hey, six oh seven, you're on at the Grow Boss. Good morning. All right. Hey, good morning. I'm gonna try this again, okay? Because okay. I was your first caller, but okay. I just opened up my uh, Grow Book and Equipment Guide okay. to the troubleshooting area, and I'm looking at. Uh, actually, I would agree with the last caller that it's in too small of a container. Um, at this point in growth, but I think in addition to your overwatering issue, which seems like it's coming with other problems, you've got a lot of sawtoothing in addition to a, sort of the, the puffy quad looking thing. So it seems like you've got a magnesium problem as well, and the top growth has become miniaturized and stunted. Uh, I'm guessing again, light too close. Okay. Nope, that's me getting high in the video. We're looking for this picture right here. Okay, all right. Oh, um, okay, all right. I think uh, somehow I just muted my Skype. All right, so I'm gonna tell you, uh, thanks for the call and you're getting close, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, it, it, yes, we agreed it's overwatering. And by definition, when a plant is overwatered and you have these speed bumps, by definition, you are going to get a micronutrient problem. Why? Because when you rot the root hairs, the plant can't absorb any nutrients. So, so 385, I'll get back to you and I'll get back to you in a sec. So yeah, 385 was correct. And there is a micronutrient problem. And for all we know, the light may be too close, but inherently, that's not the problem that we're looking at. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the backstory on the plant. Tell me everything you know about the plant. I'm gonna give you over water and you can click that one off. You're gonna have to tell me more about the bucket though because the bucket's related to the solution. That's why I was hoping the last two uh, people were gonna kind of take that bucket to the next step. All right, I was given a shout out to uh, Semit for that video. I wanna say thanks so much. And uh, New York John, you had a pretty good guess on what was in tray 12 from the great root race from last time. Um, but the theme of today's show is photosynthesis because I want to spend a little bit of time and go over 
not me getting high. I want to go over this plant nutrition on just this cool little website slideshow that I was looking at. And I just want to go over that with you and spend some time over today and tomorrow. That's why I started a little early today because I figured we would be busy from running this game of you got to tell me more about this plant. And I'm willing to listen. I'll even give you a little help and guide you along. 289, tell me a little bit more about this plant. Hey, this is uh, the Grow Boss, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So are those in like the, uh, the, uh, the friggin' fabric pots? Um, yes, they might be in the fabric pots. Why do you think that's relative? Okay, well, that's relative because that's not going to give you, like, proper drainage if you've got, like, overwatering. And if you want to solve that problem, you're going to have to go to a bigger pot, cut that that mesh one out, break all the, like, dead root off around it, and keep all your good root on, and then throw that into a bigger pot with fresh soil underneath, like dry soil, backfill with a bunch of other soil, and give it maybe a couple days to absorb into the rest of the soil, and then go back to your regular feeding schedule. Um, okay, so I'm going to, all right, dude, thanks for the call, but not almost, you're, you guys are still on track, but thanks for that call, but <clears throat> I would like to say that a fabric pot technically, probably, technically has the best drainage, I mean, the whole point of doing that cloth pot, that fabric pot, that smart pot, whoop, whoop, that smart pot, um, it's, that is specifically all about the drainage, because when we're a plastic pot, all the way around the outside and the bottom, except where the drainage holes are, there's no airflow. But when you have a cloth pot, imagine taking something wet, wrapping it in a paper towel. The paper towel wicks the moisture away and evaporates it even quicker. So, negative on the smart pot. But you guys are thinking, but, but you gotta listen to my clue. And my clue is, um, my clue is, you gotta tell me about the plant. I don't even care about the strain. Don't care if it's an indica sativa. Look at that plant and give me more information about the plant. Okay. Um, we'll get back to that in, in 289. I'll get back to you in a minute. I'm going to let someone else try first so you get some time to think about that. Um, let's see. I got a couple trade shows that I'm going to as the grow boss. <clears throat> so... Um, one of the things that I do is, you know, I sell this grow book and equipment guide and I always try to fill you guys in on what happens at the hydro store, like hydro store stories, like the hydro hustle, because I mean, if I tell you guys 85% of growers fail and I got a store that's doing good, there's a lot of people that are coming in here spending money failing. And so I always make the joke that I sell hopes and dreams. Because, I mean, at an 85% failure rate, I gotta be selling hopes and dreams because so, so few people succeed. And I've worked at a bunch of hydro stores, so it's not just my hydro store. And I really do try to help people. And I know you guys leave comments about how I talk shit about my customers. And I do, and my customers talk shit about me, and the other hydro stores talk shit about me, and yet I trade, we trade equipment and they make fun of me, and they're jealous because of what I do, and I'm jealous because they go home at the end of the day, and uh, they don't have a third job to do with editing videos and going to trade shows, but there is a relationship I have with my customers, and it is love-hate, and I do love them, and I do hate them, but you, I try to keep you informed on like what goes on in the hydro store world. And so we got little pieces and little stories about what happens in the hydro store. And I got customer stories and we go over stuff like this used equipment. And I actually sold one of those ballasts built into the hood with that fan on top for uh, <clears throat> like 60 bucks. I threw in a bulb. Oh, I was so happy to get it out of my store. It's in those pile of ballasts right there. Listen, I'll tell you right now, if you want 10 ballasts, 10 of these hoods right here that you see in, that, in, in there, no glass and 10 10,000 watt ballast 10 hoods and 10,000 watt Hortolux used bulbs dude I will sell you 10 setups with power cords for 500 bucks I have got so much equipment and you know why because here in Vegas they sell it all summer 
and then I buy it all summer and then I sell it back to them all winter. Like, like it's coming up on hot, right? And who the fuck's gonna grow in the heat? I don't care what light you buy. LED, T5, HID, all light is heat. And so we get all this equipment and like if you've been watching the show for the last few weeks, dude, the pile just keeps growing and I'm selling stuff, but the pile grows. Why? Because we buy it all summer and we sell it all winter here at the hydro store. That's why I always tell you guys, I always know what's going to happen. That's why 60 days ago, I bought two cases of uh, spider mite spray. And eight months ago, I bought two cases of mold and mildew spray. Why? Because this is spider mite season. And four or five months from now, when we get the monsoons, we're going to get humidity. And it's going to be mold and mildew season. <coughs> it's always the same thing. I already know if you come in eight months ago, you got mold and mildew. And if you come in now, you got spider mites because that's what my environment is. Not all environments are the same, but that's what it is here in Vegas. So I always get the idea of, uh, of, of sort of like what the problem is and what's going to happen. Because I read through the comments you guys leave and you're like, oh, grow boss, there's so many different ways to grow. You don't know everything. And listen, you're right, I don't. I don't need to know everything. I do need though, and that's what sort of this show is about, the, the, the photosynthesis theme. I do know though, the statistics. And just like I know eight months ago to buy mold and mildew spray, and two months ago I should be buying spider mite spray, and just like I statistically know when we look at this, when we look at this plant here, Yes, it's overwatering, but there's so much more than that. That's the obvious clue. And what I want you to do is I want you to tell me more about this plant. And I see the calls are sort of stop because I give you the information in the book, but we have to we have to weave it together. You have to give me the bio on this plant because I, I mean you need to know there are many more factors you need to know, like how full the garden is. Right? I mean, what size is that? How much light? I mean, you can make overwatered. We're clear on overwatered. Ah, all right, 289. All right, let me try this one more time. All right, 289, what do you got for me? Okay, wait. I'm just thinking on this a different way. Okay. You're looking at a solution, right? No, I'm, okay, looking, so for, no, I'm, I'm looking for a biography. I'm not looking for a solution. I've acquiesced. It is overwatering. Now, give me the history of this plant. Give me more about the history. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm looking at, like, if you want to fix that problem, I mean, you can add a fan. I mean, like, the temperature in the actual tent may be too hot. Like, Oh, yeah. You know, We're going like, to go over that, too. Listen, hey, I want to... Um, uh, I want to take this other call. Thanks for that guest. Keep calling. I'm getting closer. All right, three six zero. What what are you what are you going to tell me? Give me something new. Oh, I think I dropped three six zero. Ah, I need something new. It's like playing charades. You can't keep saying the same guess over and over. You gotta reach down deep. You gotta find something new. You gotta. Okay. You got to you got to look at this. How did this plant get here? That's a pretty good clue. How did this plant get here? All right. I think in a little bit, ooh, I think I'm having an allergy attack. Touching the bud, touching my eye. Looks like the fucking thing was I like, laid up against the wall, milkman sir. I believe you are correct. It does look like that. However, that's not <coughs> part of the solution. Okay. So, smoke this bowl and if we have time we're going to get into project grow house but what i really want to do oh, i think this is someone new calling all right 314 tell me a little bit more about this plant the lights close too close um Okay, we don't. The, the problem is for sure overwatering. I don't believe that the lights too close. We would see different signs. See, and I appreciate. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think uh, I don't think the lights too close. Um, I think uh, 
I think I'm. Uh, I appreciate the call. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I got another call coming. I appreciate the call, but the light's not too close. I, I sort of agree that the problem is overwatering. And what I'd like from you now is I'd like for you guys to tell me the backstory on this plant. You don't even have to solve the problem anymore. The problem, the problem is overwatering. So let's shift the game to who can give me the best bio, and I'll give you a grower, little grower starter kit, a little fun stuff. We got Clonex rooting gel, Clonex solution, green pads. I'll send you a little green pad junior pack. Um, I guess I'll just keep trying. All right, three eight five. Give me another. Yo, guess. I'm trying. To, I'm trying back again. Yes, sir. I'm here for you. Tell me. So I'd say. Uh, I'd say that plant has been. Sorry, I got a little kid. That's great. Yeah, I'd say that plant has always just been overwatered. Too much light constantly. Not enough airflow in the tent. It's probably been root bound its whole life. I gotta tell you. You're getting, thanks for the call. You guys are getting closer and closer to what the problem is. Now, when it comes to 385, some of the information he gave you was correct. And I'm not going to tell you which information he is, he gave those correct, or which information was not. But you can start to see the puzzles being put together in a unique way. Suddenly, 385 gave us a length of time and so that's relevant too. So I, I like that. All right. <clears throat> While you guys are thinking about that, I want to talk a little bit more about plant nutrition and this slideshow that I found because the theme of this show is photosynthesis. And I'm always telling you guys that too much water, too much light, too many nutrients are the top three problems and bugs and not enough mag in a healthy garden. So statistically, if I were to just write a book about the true problems of growing cannabis, they would literally be, don't put the light too close, don't overwater, don't overfeed, don't kill your shit, wait 12 weeks and it'll grow. Now, there's a lot of ways to fine tune that. But what I want to get into is this is, <clears throat> this is, this slide's sort of a set of weird questions. But basically it's saying everything needs food. All living organisms need food to grow and survive. Plants are known as producers because they provide food for many other organisms. That's telling us that plants convert light into leaf and that other things can eat leaf. Plants cannot move very much. So how do they get, so how do they get the food that they need? All right, so it's a couple of silly questions, but I really like how it brings us into this. Um, it says, green plants are the only living organisms that are able to do this. All other organisms rely on plants because of the food that the plants make. And what is the name of the process by which plants make their own food? So um, I would like to talk about something real quick here in terms of that word food because in question two all other organisms rely on plants because of the food that plants make but they also comment that plants need food so we're talking about two different things we're sort of talking about the food that the plants provides to herbivores or vegetarians or for a salad that's the food that plants provide for the other living organisms and then we're talking about the food that the plant needs and where I think that that that's I think it's sloppy writing on the slide once you sort of get the idea um, we can sort of roll with it all right let me try this eight five nine what can I do what, what's your guess you got to turn off your computer sound. Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. My guess is uh, they were uh, they were probably transplanted too early before the roots really got developed, and that goes with the overwatering. Uh, you know, there wasn't enough roots in the in the media. It's, you sound like a pilot. Like I listen to you on the phone, you sound like uh, you you sound just like a pilot. That's awesome. Um, okay. 
No. I, I'm I'm going to I like the way I appreciate the call. Keep thinking about it, two eight nine. Um but I'm Oh. So two eight nine. So I, I, I think I think you're right. Um in terms of it has to do with the roots. I think uh I I appreciate the call. I think um uh I think one of the buttons that I'm pressing during this show is muting me on Skype. So I will pay more attention to that because I seem to have a cross button here and I'm getting muted on Skype. So I, I like I, I like where uh I like where you guys are focused on the roots and that's part of it. But I'm really looking for like a bio on this on this plant. And and I'm not trying to give you any more hints right now because well, I got a bunch of slides to go through, so I really want you guys to think about what I mean with a bio. And so let's take another look. Let's go back here for a sec. Green plants are the only living organism. And so now we're talking about photosynthesis. And when we talk about photosynthesis, now we're talking about what? The, the light, the plant converting light into sugar. And this is exactly where it asks the question, how does the plant make food? And so the food thing is, is an important thing to consider here because in this case they're saying, how does the plant make their own food by photosynthesis? And this process is a chemical reaction that uses light energy. And then it just says that the word uh, photo means light and synthesis means putting together. But this last paragraph here says, Photosynthesis just means putting together with light. So what do green plants put together to make their food? And again, they mean the food for the plants. So we're, we're heading to, in this case, I think the word is nutrition. What do the plants put together to make their nutrition? In terms of that, um, that's, that's, that's this. So now... Photosynthesis is an energy reaction. It's a chemical reaction between the carbon dioxide in the air and the water. Energy is needed for this reaction to take place. And where do plants get this energy from? And so, where do the plants get the energy from to make their nutrition? That's still where this is driving at. So, the raw materials from photosynthesis come from the air and the soil, and what are these raw materials called? And what else do plants need to turn carbon dioxide and water into food? Okay, so what are the raw materials and what do the plants call it? And here it is again. It's asking what are the components of their food? Because this says their food is made from carbon and water and something else. So what is that something else? And let's take a call from 920 and see what your guess is, sir. Um, it looks like the leaves are tacoed up. So I'm thinking that it may have root rot. And I think that it may have a heat issue with the root area. Okay. Okay. So... Um, um, hang on one sec. Ah, okay. I figured out what causes the mute on Skype. Okay. So, in your guess, you're saying that the roots are rotted. And, and I'm going to say yes, the roots are definitely rotted. But that's today. So, I appreciate the call. Thank you. I'm going to tell you why that it's so much more than that. Why it's so much more than the rotted roots. Because that's what you're looking at now. But... This is a car accident. We know what the car accident looks like. Now we have to work backwards from that. 313, you tell me, what's this about? Uh, go boss, I say uh, not, only that, not only did they overwater, they overwatered it like crazy. And it looked like it's, it's, it stopped ruining and it got some uh, elephant foot maybe. Uh. Dude, you just keep getting closer and closer. Yes, sir. That was very good. I'll tell you why it's so very. I'll tell you why your answer is right. Give me. A, I'm gonna take the call off though. Thank you. So that guy is absolutely right on track. 
So now he's given me a timeline for this plant. And what's the timeline for this plant? He says that they've been overwatering like crazy. And so all of a sudden we go from this instant in time from the picture that we're looking at, and I got that picture yesterday, from the picture that we're looking at to what's happening now. So, oh, um, I think uh, 352 call back. So now we're looking at a depth. It's not just this picture. This picture is so many pixels deep. It's so much time deep. So tell me more about the time. 916, it's all about you. Tell me all about that plan. Uh, I'm guessing. Uh, what, what if they move that, they're vegging that plan outside, they move that plan inside, uh, uh, the, the, just the, the stress of uh, the different lights. Okay. Um, I appreciate the call. Thank you. Um, okay, so let me tell you, before I answer his question about moving the plant around or or anything about those things one of the things that I always tell you growers is don't grow a brain 352 hang on a sec don't grow a brain that was not a factor that I added into the equation so you're not allowed to invent something that that I didn't give you as part of the process so what can I do for you 352 what's your guess robots Yes, sir. Thanks for the show, bro. Fun watching the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, yeah. So, um, I was gonna do something like maybe, um, like I'm the grub boss, and you're the, the the caller calling in, you know, or what have you. And okay. so, um, I'm just gonna ask you questions, okay? <clears throat> so, grub boss, tell me about that plan. Like, um, how old is that plan? Oh, see, but that's not the name of the game. And you're on the right track. Oh. And I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. But that's not the name of the game. The name of the game is you got to tell me because I already know what's wrong. And, and while normally I would have loved to have heard the questions that you ask. So 352, if you want to do this again with me sometimes, where, sometime where you call in and you diagnose a problem with me, I would love to do that with you. That sounds like a fun game too. But today, you've got to tell me what's wrong with the sh what's wrong with the plant and give me the biography on the plant give me its history tell me the whole story start to finish look in front of it look behind it tell me everything that's happening here there's a lot of components right because it's not just what the problem is today yes at some point i'm going to start to ask you guys to tell me into the future because there's a whole story about this plant and that's the call that I'm looking for. Anyway, it's 920. We still got 40 minutes left in this show. Um, before And so, yeah, before I get back into the, uh, let's get back into the, I really like, I like where it was heading where we were talking about this part right here at the bottom. What else do plants need to turn carbon dioxide and water into food? Well, this says plants use light energy from the sun to power photosynthesis where and then it switches gears again the slides are kind of awkward but it says where in the leaf does this reaction take place photosynthesis take place in what kind of cells and so from here what i'm looking at is before they tell us the food they're going to tell us about where the energy for that food comes from so i, I just want you to like the, the 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 slides are a little jumpy but it says that plants use light energy from the sun to power photos oh so then it shows us this little picture up here about what that is it's sort of given us a little clue and it says photosynthesis takes place in plant cells with something called a chloroplast and chlorophyll absorbs the energy from sunlight that allows carbon dioxide and water to react. And when carbon dioxide and water react using light for energy, the magnesium gets used up in the process of, of part of that. So that's the purpling that shows up. And it asks, what are the other products of this reaction? 
So, so far we know chloroplast, chlorophyll, and now it's telling us that the products of the reaction between carbon dioxide and water are glucose and oxygen. Isn't this exactly what humans use for energy? We make ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is, then we break off the T, we make adenosine diphosphate, and we use the T's for sugar in the mitochondria to process reactions. Right, that's what separates eukaryotes from what? Bacteria, no, not bacteria, from eukaryotes, from prokaryotes. Prokaryotes don't have a mitochondria. They, that's like a virus. It requires host cells because it can't produce the energy itself. So we're pretty much talking about everything lives off the sugar process. That's what the whole Atkins diet was about. If you don't eat any sugar, then your adrenal glands can't release any insulin. Therefore, your blood cannot take the sugar and transport it into the cell because insulin's the key that unlocks the cell. So eventually, if you don't have any sugar, all of the live, all the sugar in your liver gets used up, all the fatty, all the sugar deposits. Then you, at that point, you go into ketoacidosis because you can't get any sugar into the cell. I mean, this is all about getting that sugar into the cell. That's the energy that we're talking about with photosynthesis. So just like we're talking about this plant over here, if, if the magic happens in the leaves and these leaves are fucked up, you don't get the magic because that's how this works. So which of these products is used by the plant and what happens to the waste product? Now, this slide tells us that the plant combines the inputs and the products of these components are sugar and water. So right now, we have water and CO2 coming in and light for energy, and it's about to tell us what comes out of the plant. And glucose is the useful product for the plant. Some glucose is used straight away by plant cells, just like with people. Some is converted to starch for storage. That's when the leaves send the energy during the photo dark period. This is at night when the plant's not photosynthesizing. The leaves send the energy that they store during the day in the form of sugar down to the roots. They flow down the xylem of the plant and the other caller had spoke about elephant foot. And let's give that guy props right now because so far that's been the deepest part of the answer because elephant foot denotes a timeline of how long this has been going on. And that's super imperative, which is another clue. Ah, I just gave you another clue. So right now we know that the plant combines light, water, and CO2 to make sugar. And then it tells us in the next paragraph right here, I, I feel like I'm preaching. I feel like I'm reading from a Bible and I'm just gonna get a little witness. Can we get some oxygen going into the... So oxygen is a waste product. The gas is transported out of the leaf as air. So we know, the, the, we know that the leaf takes carbon dioxide, a gas in. We know that it takes water from the roots. And we know that it takes light from the leaf. <clears throat> and why is this important, oxygen as a waste product? Why is that important for, uh, for, for humans and other living things? Now, I think we all know this one. Um, for, oh, this is a quick summary. Um, Okay, so here's the math equation. Using light for energy, plants combine carbon dioxide and water to make sugar and oxygen. And it does it through the chlorophyll in the middle of this cell that it's showing us right here. And oxygen is released, carbon dioxide and water. See how water comes up the petiole here? That's because water comes up from the roots. Let me, uh, mic's on. Okay, over water. Okay, so everything's going okay. So they get water up from the roots. All right. Here they break it down into stoichiometry where you have to combine both sides of this equation such that they always balance. But more importantly, it's time to notice that now we're looking at the inputs. And this is the formula. So if you want to create sugar, and this is all about the sugar, you got to be a candy farmer, and you know what that means if you read the book. you got to be a candy farmer if you want to create sugar. 
And that's this right here, the C6H1206. So we go from here, and now it switches back to leaves. How are leaves designed to maximize photosynthesis? And these are sort of all clues that I'm giving you to today's plant problem. And that's really what I'm looking for is just, a, is just a response for today's plant problem and what we're doing. So that's why today and tomorrow's show is sort of all about photosynthesis. And the question I've been asking you guys so far has been, tell me more about this plant. And we've had a lot of good answers. And they've, they, I mean, the callers nailed it right away. Clearly it's overwatered. We got that. And then we went through the different buckets. Is it plastic? Can we use a bigger bucket? And that'll draw some of the water away. But the problem with that caller was they didn't go into more detail about the frequency of watering <clears throat> or how much was being watered. And then we had another caller talk about elephant foot. I'll show you, I'll show you an elephant foot. I'll show you an elephant foot picture. Check this out. This is an example of elephant foot from overwatering. And you can see right up here, this is the MSI, the media stem interface. And where the media meets the stem, where the media meets the stem, oh, what am I doing? Where the media meets the stem, right? Yeah. Oh. This gets what's the media stem interface, the MSI, gets calcified. And where the media stays too wet next to the outside of the plant, it grows a ring around the plant from too much moisture. And it doesn't matter how many nutrients, if you use too many, then water flows into the plant and calcifies it. And if you, I'm sorry, if you use too many, water flows out of the plant and you sort of kill your plant and you don't get this far. But if media flows into the plant because you've under nutrients, then that media stem interface gets calcified. 805, tell me all about calcified. Oh, I was thinking, I just turned it on. Has anybody mentioned too many nutrients? Okay, yes, we sort of went into too many nutrients. I appreciate the call, but it, it, we're, we're sort of a little beyond that. But keep listening and you'll catch up. Thanks, dude. And we're a little beyond the too many nutrients but right here where this gets calcified it prevents the flow of of sugar during the photo dark period that's why you don't grow with 24 on 24 you have to grow 20 you have to grow 18 6 because during the photo dark period the plants transport the sugar from the leaves down to the roots where they store a starch for long-term storage and that's what this slide this slide is talking about this is glucose and how Sometimes the plant uses it for different things. It uses the glucose straight away by the plant where it makes leaves and buds and some is converted to starch for storage. And that's in the roots. So if you don't have, if you don't got the roots that you're looking for, you can see the problem that you're going to have. So in this case, it switches to tell us a little bit more about the leaf and how are leaves designed to maximize photosynthesis? And this is a big deal because you guys always ask me about chopping off all your leaves. And I tell you, it's appropriate to take some leaves if you want to uncover buds. It's not always appropriate to take every leaf. Um, maybe if you do a really good job and everything goes well, then I would say, okay, experiment. Take some leaves off one plant, compare it to another plant. But it's telling us right here that leaves maximize photosynthesis. And that's one of the big questions we get at the store. Should I take off my leaves? And it's tough for me to know. I've got a lot of questions I gotta ask you like first, like how much light do you have? And are you getting the right weight? And does it smell right? And does it look good? And all the components. Because tearing off the leaves should be like the last thing you would do. And it says that leaves are wide and they're flat because they want to create that surface area to absorb as much light as possible. They also say that leaves are really thin, so gases can easily reach the cells. And that's a big concern when you look at this plant right here. Nope, sorry, this. And that's a big concern when you look at this plant right here. 
because we're talking about how can think about your fingers when you get out of the jacuzzi they get all wrinkled and pruned if you were a bug and you breathe through your skin and your fingers are wrinkled and pruned how are you going to uh how is this going to work for you i mean you're, you're not going to be able to exchange gas because your fingers are wrinkled and pruned <clears throat> So they say leaves have lots of veins to carry water to the cells and carry glucose away. And those in those veins and in that leaf, they also have holes called stomata on their underside through which gases move in and out. So leaves on the underside move gas, leaves, on, leaves holes on top stoma. So it says stomas absorb gas so you can absorb gas from the top of the leaf and the gas goes in and out from the bottom. At least that's what it seems like it's saying. So, moving on to this next picture. Now, this is the leaf inner structure. And I really like this one because you guys always ask me that question about I put light on the underside of my leaf. Let me tell you, the only people that put light on the underside of their leaves are the ones that are killing their plants because that's a last ditch effort. I, I just wanna be clear that you can see me when I say this. That is a last ditch effort for the poor grower because if everything is going well, you can't keep it. it. It runs into the light that shit grows so fast. So two comments that always strike me when I hear them are, are I low stress train my plant. That's 100% key for overwatering. And I got light underneath my leaf so they grow faster. And what I want to point out again right here is that this is the cutaway version of a leaf. At the top is the top leaf skin, the epidermis. And that's what a thrip eats through. See that wax cuticle and into the upper epidermis. That's what a thrip eats to. And that's why when you have thrips, you get gray spots with black dots because the thrips eat the wax coat and the upper epidermis and the light doesn't reflect off the leaf properly anymore. See the angle of yellow coming in from the top up here, right up here. The angle comes in, but it doesn't reflect properly because it's being scattered like the moon scatters light. Okay, so it eats off the waxy cuticle. But then if you notice, the next thing is the, is the palisade metaphyll. And what we learned was inside that meso, mesophyll is the chloroplasts. And the chloroplasts are what absorb the light. So we can see that the light goes from the top down. It makes sense because the sun is above us. And then we continue looking down. There's the spongy mesophyll, mesophyll. There's a little airspace in there. And then in the lower epidermis, there is the exchange of gases. And when we talk about the exchange of gases, I think there was a slide. No. Okay. So the exchange of gases is CO2 and O2, right? And you know how everybody always talks about uh, CO2 is heavier than air and they think they know something because they know that CO2 is heavier than air. Meanwhile, they got a thousand watt light 24 inches over their plants. So really what they know is one fact that has nothing to do with growing. But it makes sense because the plant's really fucking smart. And if you ever in your life have said, I put light underneath my leaf, I just want you to understand that the plant is literally 50% smarter than you minimally because the part of the leaf where the plant absorbs light is on the top and the part of the leaf and the part of the leaf where the plant absorbs gas is on the bottom and what gas does the plant absorb CO2 and if CO2 is heavier than air and would get trapped beneath the canopy so in a rainforest, the CO2 would get trapped beneath the canopy and the atmosphere would stratify just like cold water and the salinity goes up with pressure and, and it, it's inversely proportional to temperature. <clears throat> the colder the temps, the higher the salinity. 
And think about it. That's why ice floats. And that's why fish don't die every year because the ice sinks. So ice starts at the top rather than it comes up from the bottom and raises all the fish. So all I'm saying is that just like it happens in the water, where ice rises, it forms at the top, the density and the salinity below, since there's no salt in the ice, salinity increases, therefore it freezes at a lower temperature and the fish don't die. That's how fucking smart the ocean is. So when we talk about how smart the plants are, you don't need to invent anything. In your world, all you have to do is work with what you got. And that gets you pretty far. Three six zero. What do you know? Hey, you still doing the live show? Hell yeah! Tell me what awesome. you know about this. Well, turn the volume down. How's it going, brother? Hey, tell me what you. Good afternoon. Tell me what you know about this plant. Well, uh, learned a little bit through one successful grow in soil using a TLO method with an LEC three fifteen. And now I'm looking to expand what I'm doing, and I've learned a lot from you. Uh, somebody just told me TLO, it, it ends in organic. What's TLO? True Living Organics. Ah, that's right. You do teas and stuff like that. Okay, great. So, what did you learn from your first grow? Um, the less you mess with the plant, the better. The less you water it, the better. The more you uh, ignore the plant, the more it does what it's supposed to do. <clears throat> okay. And, and applying that to the picture that I've been, one of the pictures that I've been showing you that looks like, uh, that looks like, that looks like this. What do you think, what can you tell me about this? That looks like an overwatered plant that's uh, pruned up, like you said, like when we were in the pool too long. Okay, but that's today. I mean, that's this picture. You got to give me a biography of this plant. All right, listen, I wanted this one. I wanted to say congratulations on your first grow. And I totally appreciate the call. I'll answer. I'll, I'll address what you just said just now. Thanks. So here they're telling us, here the caller is telling us again that it's overwatered. But that's not, that's one instant in time. How old is this plant? And how long is it going to go on for? And what else do we know about it? And while you guys are thinking about that, I'm gonna finish up this slide. It's getting a little late. I suspect we'll probably get someone to come to the store in a little bit. And so I'll give you another hint as the show ends. But what I really wanna point out to you is internet research is the worst. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, okay. Here's the thing. <sighs> you know what the problem is? You're just going to bitch at me for bitching about my customers. But it's not bitching. It's a statistical thing. And I always feel like if I have to preface something by saying, oh, it's statistics, then I'm already being defensive. And then I feel like I should keep my mouth shut so I don't get bitched at. But this is a statistical game. So let me tell you that when we talk about light and water and CO2 and yield and nutrients and all of these things, this is a statistical game. And there are only so many things that can go wrong. And once we sort of identified all the things that can go wrong, if you just avoid that failure, then technically you'll have some degree of success. Now, technically it's a trick I do. I don't really teach you how to grow. I teach you how to avoid failure. That's literally what's on my no more grow more cards. Like this deck of cards right here is every question you guys ask me. And we've gone over the roots and the things that you guys say. And you know, this there's 90 cards in here. All I'm saying is that statistically and and you'll read it in the comments on the videos. Oh, grow boss, you should be more open-minded. You should listen to what other people have to say and collect all their information. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. Because I already know every problem you're going to have. There is nothing left for me to learn. When I can get the same yield from the same light three times in a row, 
that's sort of like all you can do, right? Because if you want to double your yield, you wouldn't double your nutrients, you would double your light and you would double the canopy because you can't get twice the yield in the same space, right? So all of these factors that we talk about and all of the things that you guys try to do with lighting on the underside of the leaf and you tell me that CO2 is heavier than air and you tell me all of these facts and figures and, and then you do internet research. Somebody asked in today's questions early on, somebody asked, oh, that was that fan video, I was so high. Somebody asked, um, <laughs> they asked about uh, the three-in-one grows, the, the closets that do everything together. And I got a video that's literally called Number One Failure When Growing Cannabis. And, and it's the super closet things like, you know, the three-in-ones, like uh, this kind of stuff. This kind of, it's the absolute, absolute, the best way to fail, the most spectacular way you could fail is to buy a three-in-one closet and put LEDs in it. That's the best way. I will tell you that statistically, almost 50% of the calls I get on the Grow Boss hotline, 50% of the calls have to do with this exact video um um i i have this exact nope sorry let me this exact video it's just straight statistics um this exact video um I have an LED and a, an, ah, yeah, a nope. Oh yeah, cannabis and the kind LED. This guy right here did a pretty good job, but I got another one somewhere in here where it shows you LEDs in, in a little tent. Anyway, LEDs in a little tent, too much light. So what I'm really always trying to get at you guys on is statistically, we already know what's going to happen. Listen, I'm a paramedic on an ambulance. If you just tell me male or female, how old they are, and which part of town it is, I already know. I mean, is it a stereotype? Oh, hell yeah. But am I a stereotype? Oh, hell yeah. I mean, like all my customers that come through are all sort of right stereotypes for the types of people that we are. And what I'll tell you is the type of person that thinks they're smarter than Mother Nature and thinks they're going to get some shit for nothing and then does internet research and then comes up with the LED in, an, in a hydro system, highest probability of failure, 619. Tell me what's up with those plants. What's going on with them? Hi. It looks to me like when I'm looking at the plants, because they're kind of drooping, that uh, they could use some water. It looks like the, because usually the leaves are, uh, are actually reaching up for the light, and because they're not, uh, it looks like they're not getting enough water to to do the, the, the job that they need to do. Okay. And so where did you get that? Where did, you, okay, so it, you have a conclusion. It's based on uh, your, you, you examine the signs and symptoms and you've come up with the conclusion. Where did you get the information for that conclusion? Well, I know that, I mean, I've got my own plants that I grow and I know that there are times like when they're, uh, when they're a little bit stressed um, because they're not getting, uh, there's a turgor that occurs like in the actual plant fibers themselves that actually, when they actually have enough water to actually produce uh, what they need to do, the plants actually are a lot more sturdy. They are able to actually produce the fibers and they're able to produce everything that they need to, to allow the leaves to grow towards the light. And when you're not, you're not giving them the water, which is a big part of the cellulose fibers that are actually in the plant cell, um, they can't really produce that, that trigger to actually make them, to give them the strength to be able to reach toward the light. Okay, let me say this. Your explanation on turgor is most appropriate 
the answer was completely wrong and and just keep listening and oh. I, um, I'll catch you up on why it was wrong thanks so much for that call um, we had spoke about Turger earlier and Turger is let's say I was dehydrated it's hot it's vagusitis um, you sweat a lot you 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 don't drink enough and we call it tenting you take your skin and you pinch it and you can tell see how that returns to normal well wow, that's a lot slower than 20 years ago anyway so if it stayed up like this that would be a function of turgor and I would be dehydrated other ways to look at that are their eye our, our patients eyes they they get um, the red they'll get red the conjuncta will get very pink they'll be dehydrated their heart rates will go up so these are signs and symptoms of that and we had to spoke about turgor and where you guys worry about the chlorine in your water I tell you who cares because they get chlorine from all the nutrients anyway NPK calcium chloride sodium chloride um all of the chlorides and the plants want chlorine that's part of their turgor but in this case the plants are dramatically overwatered and that's part of what I'm looking for you guys to tell me about is tell me about the dramatically overwatered part tell me about the life expectancy of this plant into the future tell me I mean we've got a lot of good information so far we've got overwatered somebody said the light too close I don't think the lights too close because that's a different kind of a curl a light too close curl is you start to get these intervenal yellowing the leaves thin up in terms of width and they roll under and down they don't puff up and chicken claw they roll under and down and and yes they both cower to get away from the light but you can see that th this plant is miniaturized miniaturized is way too much light with the leaves yellow intervenal spaces dark green veins that intervenal space and the main vein down the leaf <laughs> main vein and you can see that they sort of get the real narrow and then they roll under but they roll under they don't puff up they don't swell up like a book that's been dropped in the water and that's a, this is a too much light and okay and this is a too much nutrient see when you get too much and somebody else guessed too much nutrient earlier see when you get too much nutrient what we're talking about is too much salt outside the area of the root zone and water always flows to concentration I mean just I mean I could show you the slide but I think we can all agree that water right so flows to concentration so what happens is instead of water flowing up the plant and out the leaves and the water that flows up into the leaves remember is getting converted into sugar and it's releasing the oxygen so then the oxygen goes out the leaf and at night the sugar goes down the plant so this caller talked about turgor so if you have too much salt outside the plant then the first thing that dies is the leaf tip why because at the very top the closest part to the light the, there doesn't get any more water because suddenly the water flow is reversed and now the water goes down the plant out the root to try to balance all, off the amount of salt so the amount of salt in the media is equal to the amount of salt in the plant if you've got 2000 ppm media and the plant wants 200 you're gonna get burnt tips because the water is going to leave the plant go out the bottom turgor however is to continue your idea turgor is literally the plant is over turgored in an overwatering condition because even with too much light the leaves the margins roll down the tips come down like this but the leaf surface is still flat and you can see the intervenal yellowing but the that's too much water and that's capillary action and instead of the water going down the plant and out the roots the water goes up the plant but too much water gets into each cell 
And what happens when too much water gets into each, each cell? The word is lysis. You lyse, sorry, lyse. You lyse the cell. And that's a big deal, right? I mean, if you lyse the cell, it happens to farmers. That's why with citrus crops, they, uh, they run heaters at night. That's why in the Bushmaster, and, and I'm working on the videos. If you want an update on the Bushmaster, I'm working on the videos. I've got that great root race, the first one I just put up. I'm working on the videos. So that was too much nutrients. So, so far what we've got, um, okay, so do I have a customer that's 10 minutes early? Yes. All right, so we'll probably be ending the show on time. I knew I wasn't going to get through the slides, and tomorrow's a two-hour show because the store doesn't open until 11. But that's, well, you know, when we look at this slide, this are all the things you have to tell me. I mean, it's overwatered, but I need a little bit of history. I need some science to back it. If you're going to give me a solution, I need some evidence-based information. <clears throat> they call it EBE in nursing, what? Evidence-based experience, evidence. So you have to treat, the, you have to look at it and treat. But I told you at the beginning, there were literally two words described this, and that was overwatering, and that was what all you guys got on. I mean, you guys got that pretty quick. So it just requires, it just requires some more information on it. And you'll see as we discover it through tomorrow, because I'll hand it to you tomorrow by the end of the show. Um, I'll get my, I'll, I will keep that Clonex solution, Clonex gel, green pad and all that other stuff. And I'll sell it to somebody. <laughs> But we have got a pretty good start on what the problem is, um, you know. And so it, it's just interesting. It's it's very clear. And when you hear me say it, you'll be like, "Oh shit, that's what he says in all of his videos, right?" Because I've got to almost have to give you 29 minutes worth of information. So you call up in a 30-minute hotline, and we have to discuss that plant. For 30 minutes and my side of it's I mean it's usually the same thing I mean it, it, either you're one of two people you you accept the information and you listen to it and then we talk for the last 15 minutes or you want to tell me all about it and then I, I give you the I mean either way the answer is overwatered and then however much information you want me to share with you is however long you'll allow me to talk about it it's very detailed what I get into and it's the stuff that we're talking about today it's the stuff literally that I'm showing you on, on this. It's the stuff that you hear me answer the calls with. I mean, this is just straight science. And so far, we're into slide 16 of 41. And we've already got past the fact that, you know, that nutrients have anything to do with this because they've already told us that, that the plant makes its own food. So what's that even going to mean? And then we look at this leaf and we see the relationship of this leaf. And I'm like, hey, is there anybody home? You know what I mean? Like, like, hello in there. I'm giving you the answer throughout the show. These slides are literally the answer throughout the show. Of course, this slide is just one part of a, of a 29 minute answer. But I need you to give this to me like you were sitting in front of a, a, a class and you still had 59 minutes and 48 seconds to go after you said, you see this picture? It's over water. You got some time to go and I want you to fill in that time with me. And when you can give me that whole sentence and that, the whole paragraph, and when you can give me the history, when you can tell me where this plant came from and how it was treated, what's wrong with it, the scientific portion of how the relationship of the, the cells on the plant, how all of these things happen together, and then the future of the plant and what they should do with the plant. I mean, if you just took, which is sort of how I'm going to end the show, that and some advertising. <laughs> Where if you just took that, what I just said, that is a script. 
God, every time I hear that Microsoft noise, it freaks me out. Did I lose a mic? Am I muted? Am I, did I run out of time? So I, I need a biography. I need you to be literally like, give me like a case file. Started the history. You need to like read it off to me. You need to, you know what I mean? Like you need to give me, tell me all about that plant. Is, what is everything you know prior to? We know overwatering. That's great, but I need I need like I, I need an outline that you have to follow. And when I talk about statistics, I have an outline that I follow. If you give me a 30 minute consult, and that's that's this. If you do a 30 minute consult with me, we play one game. And if you give me a 60 minute consult, sometimes um, I do 30 minutes and give you the other 30 minutes at a later time so you get to process. And sometimes you use the whole hour at once. But it's a game that it's a game that I play because I mean Caesar Milan, dude, he was right. He fixes the dog and he trains the people. Because all I'm telling you is less is more. This caller is telling you. And then what I'm asking you to do with a picture like this is to deduce it. Tell me everything about it. And when you can tell me everything about it, you can work in my hydro store. No, 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 no. I'm not inviting you to work in my hydro store. Sorry, I forgot a bunch of literal growers. But you could work at a hydro store as long as you're prepared to take people's money because I told you back in the beginning we sell hopes and dreams, right? Because everything that I've talked about today has had nothing to do with anything really other than not having certain types of problems. Right? And those types of problems are overwatering. And those types of and the relationship between light and nutrients and correctly diagnosing the problem. And where do you get those information from? Where do you get that information from? I mean, I would have loved to have shared more about my uh my customer stories. You know, one kid runs away, starts a business, runs away for a girl in another state, mom comes in with other son sells me 6,000 ballasts, six 1,000 watt ballasts and, you know, 10 hoods. And if you want, I will sell you 10 bulb ballast hoods. No glass in the hood, used Hortolux bulbs, used magnetics. I will sell you 10 setups with power cords for 500 bucks. Anyway, I hope to get more into this, more into it about the store tomorrow. It's running up on 10 o'clock. Uh, see, you want to know why I make fun of customers? Because you and I could hang out. We could do this for another hour and then two more hours tomorrow. Because as we go through it, all we keep doing is knocking down those myths, right? And if you want more information about those myths, this is my grow book. And literally, top 15 weed growing myths right there. I'm literally going to do a video where I just read to you. I'm just going to be like, Grow boss myth number eight. Put on my glasses and just straight read it to you because it's the same thing over and over. All right, I'm the grow boss. If you like the show and you do because I've got almost as many people watching this week as I did last week for almost the whole time. And this is a holiday weekend. Have a safe Memorial Day. Remember, don't, don't smoke an enormous amount of wax, wax and drive a boat or drive a car. And of course my sponsors are always Green Pad and Mondi, Light Rail and Sentinel, Clonex, Clonex Root Maximizer, Humboldt Nutrients, Mondi Spray Bottles. And maybe tomorrow I'll be able to give away a shirt and a free kit. And if you have any questions and you can't get on the show to answer questions because I'm busy, you can always sign up for a consult on my website, Grow Boss Hotline. I always appreciate the support. I hope you guys like the stories from the store. I'll try to get more into it tomorrow. I appreciate it.
That's even better. Let me turn it off. I don't know. Otherwise, it's next to the thing. Take this with you, please. And set it next to that. Both those with me and set it next to that other thing.